Hey guys, welcome to another paint along. I'm so glad you could hang out with me today. Uh, I'm Jess. I am uh, also known as Artist Journeys. And what you're going to be doing is following me along today as I do a portrait request. The portrait was a kitty cat whose name was Yada. And that's Y-A-D-A. -A. He's a beautiful little tabby. Um, and it's a cool pose. They actually have him looking straight up. Might be a little hard to tell right now. The gray surface you see there is a sanded. And when I say sanded, I'm talking about it feels like sandpaper. So it has been coated with a coating that feels scratchy to the surface. And it is on top of a masonite board. And I really do enjoy pastel board. There are some mixed feelings on the way it acts. Uh, but as you can see, I'm using watercolor and even light watercolor. And you can see I've changed the eyes from my original location. I changed them once again once I start applying pastel. What I'm doing is just getting some of those tonal values in. This cat is actually a very brown tabby, but there's a little bit of red underneath. Um, especially where the light hits the brown. And uh, I'm using the Koi watercolors, which I use mostly for underpainting because they actually stay really opaque. <laughs> you see I mess up the eyes again here, so I know that I can go back over it once it dries. So I am using my uh, underpainting to try to get an established set of colors. Uh, yes, his legs are not blue and yellow. But again, we have the well-lit area, and that is going to get some warmth by the yellow. And we have the blue, which is the area that is not well-lit. And you'll hear things like cool and warm and cool colors. Just think of cold, burr, blue, icy. So you're going to see coolness in shadows when someone is lit by warm objects. Warm objects, think sun, hot, red, orange. Orange being kind of the warmest color. So red, orange, yellow, and shadows you will find mostly in the blues and purples. Um, greens are kind of that in-between color. So we won't talk about that too much. The Again, all I'm really trying to do is just establish, and you can see I changed those eyes three times. Now I've dried it. And you can see that I can touch it with no change in any of the surface. Uh, paint it in a cool little background. And this is what happens, by the way, if your cat dumps your watercolor water on, um, onto your pastels. You need to let them dry out overnight or they do that. So this is the next day. Uh, I've let everything dry out. And yes, my cat, Frankie, decided to take my watercolor water and pull it down onto my art. And yay, Masonite did not warp, did not distort. As a matter of fact, my underpainting stayed mostly intact. Uh, I used a little bit of my black charcoal here to start deepening where things that are really prominent on tabbies, tabbies have those really good marks. Uh, they call them ticks, like, not ticks. That's like the things that suck your blood. <laughs> what is it called, ticking? where you have just these little white hairs that are above gray hairs. And that's where you really get that, that really good depth on these kitty cats. Um, so again, I'm just trying to put in some of the major shapes. I've elongated the feet. I think I might even change them a little bit more again. I'm trying to get everything to line up with the way the reference photo I have is. Uh, and I spend quite a bit of time on the lights and darks. So you'll see me kind of going with the lightest color I have, the darkest color I have. And then I spend the second amount of most of the time on the eyes. Um, I am trying to get a good likeness because, yes, it's a cute cat, but it doesn't look like it has the same expression as the cat. And you'll get a chance to see the reference photo here coming up. I am trying to get, again, the biggest shapes figured out. So if I see a block of part of the kitty's cheek that is golden or terracotta colored, I may color that whole section in the shape of a check mark or the shape of a triangle. And then as things start to refine down, I might go, okay, that's got a little bit of lightness to this side of the triangle. The cat itself was not purple, but as you can see on its back there, I put some of the, the primary colors back there and purple is a receding color. 
So think of the colors of the rainbow. And when you think of the rainbow, you know, red is the most, um, the, the beginning color. And then it goes to orange, yellow, green, blue, uh, and then magenta or violet. And when you're doing paintings and you want things to not stand out, you typically can paint them purple, even if they're not purple. And that was one of the coolest secrets anybody ever told me. So if you're painting a landscape and you're painting trees, you want to be further back, even if you're looking at them in real life and they're further back and you're like, hey, I can tell they're green. Paint them purple anyway and just see how cool it looks. You can dot some green back over top of it, which will suggest it. Oh, there's the reference, by the way. And you can see he's got this joy. <laughs> I dropped my tablet. He's got this joy in his eyes and he looks a little angry. So you'll see I'll start tweaking that to try to get that smizing, as Tara Banks used to call it, um, the smizing, the smiling eyes, which that cat definitely has. Uh, but going back to what I was saying, I would find that if I was having trouble making a landscape look interesting or uh, separate it out really well, paint that back layer of trees purple, lavender, like, like the color of his body in the back there. And there's something about the way our eyes figure out what's far away, what's close, the grayer and more cool the colors are. And again, remember those cool colors, purple, blue, uh, the further back they'll sit. So I will take and paint a whole row of trees in the back half purple. And then I'll use a little bit of, of a cool green. Again, a green that's closer to blue, which makes it cooler. Anything closer to yellow would make it warmer. So a warm green would look like it's more in the foreground and a cool green will look like it's more in the background. And I would then dot some of that cooler green in with that lavender. And then I would start doing another layer of slightly warmer trees or warmer greens in the front. And that just gives that effect, that depth. Try it one day. Even if you're not doing a really pretty set of trees, just put a whole bunch of purple down in the back and then put green in the front. And all of a sudden you go, oh, I see now that looks like they're sitting further back just because we're trained that those cooler colors recede. And that has a lot to do with the atmosphere and you know stuff that I can go into another time, but just thought I would share all that based on the fact that our cat is purple in the background. <laughs> He's not really purple. Uh, I have been going through and warming up some of the tones on his body. Again, he's not really brown. He's kind of that, that, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? That kind of a gray brown color. He's very gray, but where the light catches him, you'll see little yellow tonal values and even terracotta or that really warm brick red color. And I only want it to show just in a couple places. And uh, I'm starting to refine where all of his lines line on his face. I feel like I've gotten his expression a lot better. And um, oh, those ears, those ears gave me a little hard time. I think I've changed them quite a few times as well. Okay, so the bow. See how Mr. Yada wears a bow? Apparently he wears one all the time. So they did send me a reference photo of their favorite bow and the commissioner had asked that I add that to it. So now you're gonna see how I incorporate more than one photo. So the photo they'd sent me when you saw before did not have the bow. But since he actually wears that bow frequently, uh, I decided, uh, well, they asked that I would incorporate it into this. So I was happy to do that. Now, here he is without the bow, progress shot, and just kind of a shot of my old workstation. And here he is back to me trying to refine the bow. So I am hoping you guys have enjoyed watching me paint this and the, um, the details in the bow are gonna pretty much finish him up. One cool little thing to note, if you look at the background of him on the left, so you can see all those little swirls and kind of neat little ambiguous marks, um, that's where the water spilled on him. And I actually really liked it. So I may experiment with doing that again. Uh, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I do thank you for watching and listening to me ramble on and on. And uh, sorry about the wait between videos. I'm trying to practice on Premiere Pro and it's a little too advanced for me. So here's the finished product and all the different kinds of pencils.